Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to the first Autumn Baking Live event, which is brought to you by Marubishi Malaysia, your trusted confectionery and baking ingredient distributor. Hello everybody. Are we all here? Hi, I see a lot of people now. Thank you for coming in. Can you say hi? Leave a message down below and say hello and let us know where are you from. It's 8 o'clock evening in Malaysia now. It would be great if I can see some people from the north, the south, or the West. Hello. Wow, I'm seeing a lot of people are coming in. Thank you. If you are here, please like and share our page, our live, like and share it so that get more people to come in to join this event. Stay tuned. We have a good stuff for you guys. Like and share our page, our life. Wow, we are still seeing some people coming in. Thank you very much. Wow, there are some people from Australia, the people from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and there are some People from the east of Malaysia, Sabah, hello, welcome. Wow, we have some people from the west, Cambridge. We have Philippines, from Philippines. Hello, hello, thank you for coming in. Wow, we have friends from Singapore. Hello, hi. My name is Janet and I will be your host and moderator for this evening. Together with me tonight, live from Autumn Kitchen will be none other than the baker behind the book, Autumn Baking Natural Yeast 2C. Tonight, she will be sharing her knowledge and experience in baking sourdough bread, which focusing on how to read the dough. This session will roughly take about 40 to 45 minutes where she will be showing three types of dough at different stages. To explain tonight's topic of how to read the dough, we will be addressing some questions during and the end of the session. Tuesday also has a special announcement to make at the end of the session, so do stay with us until then. Apart from myself and Chu C, tonight we will also have a group of friends called the Zumi Seven, who will be trying their best to answer all your burning questions related to the topic tonight. Therefore, I would strongly encourage you to make yourself comfortable, grab whatever you need, be it a notebook to jot down all the importance of sharing, water or snacks, so that you won't miss out any part of the session. Lastly, as this is our first live session, should there be any technical difficulties, we seek your understanding and patience. All right, let's begin our session. Chusi, over to you. Thank you, Janet. Good evening, everybody. This is Chelsea from Autumn. I'm glad to see so many of you joining us tonight. Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to read the dough. Therefore, I intended to do a live session to show the entire process from the autolist to the shaping. So stay with us until the end of this session. Before I start, let me show you what is the flour that we will be using throughout the session. We will be using Hans Yokunin flour. This is 
a Japanese meal flour where the wheat from Canada and USA, United States. I've been using this flour since I started my sourdough baking for like four to five years back. And I find this flour is quite easy to work with and it is quite smooth and it takes hydration very well. I am using this flour not just on my base flour for my sourdough, I have been using this for the soft bread and also feeding my starter. The reason being I use this flour for my starter is this is a flour with pure wheat. There is nothing added to the flour and no additives. If you look at the flour ingredients, this flour has only wheat flour. There is no ingredients A, B, C, D, E. Alright? So let's move on to the Otterly's dough. Alright. Okay, pan sugarnin's flour. So we're going to show you the dough that has been Otterly's. Right, this is a dough that has been autoless for an hour. You can see the dough is very smooth, silky, and it actually yields a very thin layer of membrane. So the dough has actually semi-developed after an hour of autoless. Well, Chusi, can you just tell us how long does the dough need to be autoless? You mentioned, is it one hour? Well, for me, I usually practice about one hour autolysis, but if you do not have any time, uh, much time to spend, you can do a short autolysis, like 20-30 minutes. You can even do like uh, one hour or two hours. But if you intend to do a long autolysis, you need to do like uh, put into the fridge. Alright, okay. So, um, can I know what's the reason behind that you autolysis? Uh, Autolysis will help the flour to be hydrated well before you can start adding the starter and the dough has actually been semi-developed and you can have an easier dough to work with towards the, uh, the later stage of the dough. Okay, okay, look at, look at the dough. So this is the um, dough that has already autolysed. Look at autolysis and has been autolysis for one hour. So this is how the dough looks like. So for those who doesn't know that, so look at that. This is the dough. So it's not really completely formed yet. It's a, just a dough, you know, without any starter. Yep. I'll be showing you how I add my starter. This is a 20% starter that usually I will use in my recipe. 20% of 100% hydration starter and this dough has 75% hydration. Okay, 20% starter. So which is what? How many gram of starter for this dough? 60 gram for 300 gram of flour. Okay, so you are using 300 gram of flour here. So look yes. at that. So this is how I add my starter. And you can see I actually pinch and fold, pinch and fold without tearing the dough. You need to maintain the dough in nice piece without tearing the gluten. Yes, look at that. Okay. Mm. So the way I add the starter is pretty gentle. I can actually make this like four to five minutes process. Yes, look at that. So bear in mind we don't break the gluten yeah. of the dough. So you just uh, gently rub it in and yes. pinch it in, isn't it? Yes, we don't want to tear the gluten. So, right, we don't want to tear the gluten. So And you see when the dough stick to the side, I love to use this spatula. You just wet the spatula, you scrap it down from the side so that you don't have to pull hard and tear your dough. Mm. So the dough is still in one ball and one piece and the gluten still stay very nice. That's a good tip. I learned that today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah. Okay, look at that. So slowly and gently, you know, pinch it in and make sure you don't um, tear the gluten and destroy the structure of the dough. All right. You can see the dough is getting stiffer because of the stretch motion. I'm stretching the dough so it will be become stiffer and stiffer. But that's alright. After you rested a while, before you add the starter, it's going to be relaxed back. So it's alright. So, okay. 
for those who just came in and we are from Autumn Kitchen here and this is the dough that Juicy just autolis and she's now um, putting in the uh, the starter we are using the pan shukunin flour uh, which is a uh, 300 gram here in this dough yeah so this is the usual way I add my starter and at the end of adding starter you will find the dough is quite tight in a ball you need to rest it before you can add the salt you you will you will need to rest like 10 to 15 minutes time so that the pull of the dough doesn't the dough doesn't resist to your pulling. Yes, look at that. Okay. And today, since we have only like 40 minutes to run through the whole process, I have actually pre-prepared another dough that has actually added starter and rested for 15 minutes. So let's take a look at these two. Mm, look at that. You can see this dough is stiff after added the starter mm. yes whereas this one that has been rested is extensible and is easy to pull off so this is the stage where you can start adding your salt do not add over here you're going to stiff up and overwork your dough all right so this is the dough that need to go for a 10 minutes rest so after we added the starter we need to rest the dough isn't it uh, yes. see, so we need to rest the dough. Yes, you need to rest the dough and use a scraper, loosen it up so that you don't tear the gluten. Remember, don't tear the gluten and you will have a very easy to work with dough towards the whole process. This is a salt that I'm adding, 2%, which is about 6 gram. Okay, so this is the dough that has already been rested for how long, you see? 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes, all right? Yeah, so. But you can test it, you can feel your dough, you can read your dough, no? Don't go with the clock. If your dough is so stiff, then you can rest 20 minutes or even 30 minutes. Feel, this is how you need to read your dough, not going with the clock. Yeah. So you can see it's quite easy, quite it doesn't resist to my pulling, whereas compared to the other dough, it resists to my pulling. So just sprinkle it all over and do the same small pinching and stretching to yeah. add in the salt. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Okay. The, the dough is very smooth, mm. remains silky smooth. Okay, look at that. Oh. So again, we don't tear the gluten, yes. isn't it? Yes, the dough to... has very nice gluten from yeah. beginning. Yeah. Until you shape your dough, you don't ruin your gluten, uh, the dough, the gluten of the dough. Okay, so we are using 300 gram of this pan shukunin flour here. Look at that and the structure is really nice for the dough in this stage now, even though in this early stage it looks good. So I think, um, look at that. So make sure you don't break the gluten and do it gently. Pinch your, flour, uh, pinch your salt in evenly. Yeah. Make sure your starter and salt is distributed evenly so that uh, it helps to leaven your dough more optimally. Okay, look at that. and. Okay, almost it, done, isn't it? Yes. Oh, when you do a lot of pinching, stretching, your dough gets stiff again. So this mm. is how stiff it looks like, just like how uh, the dough looks like when I added the starter, right? Mm. So it looks stiff in a ball, but it's all right. You, you have to rest it before you do the stretch and fold. Mm. Well, again, have to read the dough, isn't it? Really, have yes, to read yes. The dough. You have to understand your dough. Okay, we don't go with the clock. Okay, we have to read the dough and really have to watch the dough instead of your clock and feel your dough. Yeah, usually this dough, I will rest it like 10-15 minutes, then I'll do the stretch and fold. But we, we don't have that much of time to spend here. I will do a stretch and fold. I will do one circle of stretch and fold here and you you understand how the dough looks like before I transfer to the grease glass dish. Okay. No. So this is how I pull and stretch through the middle. But remember to do it after your dough has been relaxed. Yeah. 
So we have to really relax the dough first before we can do the next step, which is the stretch and fall. But because of time constraint, we are going to demonstrate how Chusi does a stretch and fall straight away after yep. adding the salt. Yep. So. Okay, um, I see some questions popping up and people are asking, is there a maximum time to auto lease your dough? Yep, um, all right, it depends on the flour. Some flour will degrade over the longer period of auto lease. So you may need to test with your flour, but the usual auto lease, like a few hours in the fridge, should be fine. Okay, so, so this is stretch and fold, and after adding salt, yeah, this is how I do a one cycle of the stretch and fold. Mm -hmm. And if you think the dough is very slacking, over 10 minutes it's slack and it becomes so extensible, you can do another round. But I'm showing one set and I'm going to transfer it to rest in the glass dish. Okay, so this is the stretch and fold. So we have done the stretch and fold and then now it's going to transfer to the glass dish. Yeah. So when you transfer your dough, try to lift the dough with the seam side down. Seam side down. So you have a shiny sheen facing up with the seam side down. So this is how the dough looks like. Okay, so look at that. So this one, Chusi has already added, uh, uh, has done her stretch and fold. Okay. But again, we need to rest the dough, but because of time constraints, she's going to show you how to do the coil fold. Yeah. And All right. So this dough, as you can see, it is quite stiff because we have just done the stretch and fold. Yeah. I will show you another dough that has rested after this for about an hour. So how do you judge usually when to coil fold the dough? I think there are a lot of people asking these questions. I don't know when should I coil fold my dough. Look at this. This dough has spread a lot compared to this. This dough has rested for one hour. This is where you need to see and read your dough. Do not coil the dough just because it is 30 minutes interval and you were asked to do three coil fold every 30 minutes. Don't do it. You have to judge. For this, it has rested for one hour. So this is how it looks like before I decided to coil it. Okay, so again, read the dough yep. and not the clock. I will show you how extensible the dough is, how relaxed and how it should feel when you do your coil. Okay. Just loosen the dough with the side of the, mm -hmm. the side of the dough, just leave it up. Can you see how soft my dough is? Don't work on the dough that is stiff like a stiff ball. This is how soft it is, fold in. If the dough is so soft and extensible that you can actually extend a lot more, do a multiple coil. You can do multiple coil. And you can turn around, do the other two directions. But if your dough is very stiff, you can do a simple coil where it only involves two directions. It doesn't have to do four sides. So this is how it looks like after the coil fold. It looks strong. Mm. I will show you if you are trying to coil this just because your timing is due and you want to go with the clock, this is how it looks like. Take it out, the whole piece is like a rock. How do you coil? When you are coiling this, you are overdoing the overworking on the dough. So don't coil a dough just because you want to read the clock. All right, this is how it looks like. All right, and... Um is there a specific rule to do a complete coil? I think you have just explained and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we don't have a specific rule. So you yes. ne really need to feel your dough. You can do two directions, four yeah. directions, as long as you build some strength and fold the dough into a stronger shape. This is a strong dough by now, but it needs to take a bit of time to relax. Maybe another one hour is spread, then only you do the coin. If it doesn't spread, you can do lesser coin, like one set or two sets, which is sufficient. Okay, I see there is a question asking. Um, there is no bench light fold. So can you please explain what is bench light fold in here? Oh yes, okay. You have just pointed out the method I've shared in my Instagram and my Facebook. Bench light fold usually comes in when I need to build extra strength to the dough. For example, dough that has higher whole grain, 
higher hydration, very slacking dough or very weak flour that you have very low protein percentage of uh, flour so your dough is very slacking then you do the bench light fold for dough like this it is strong enough that I can skip the bench light fold just do the stretch and fold transfer to the dish and do the coil so this is all right at 75% hydration for pan's yokunin flour remember this flour can take up to this hydration I can always work it up to 78 but for a comfort level you can work on 73 to 75 for pan's yokunin flour the feel is very smooth, shiny, silky at any stage. Even from beginning of otolis until you call it, it's at any stage. I can see it from here, a nice membrane, really yes. nice. If you wet your hand, it doesn't stick to your hand really and you can nice test one. it, it is very nice. You can yeah. rest the dough. Yeah, okay. So, um, all right. So, somebody is asking, Maybe you have just explained and do we grease our bowl before we transfer yes, our dough? Yes, yes. I actually spray grease my glass dish, just lightly spray it so that it doesn't stick, the dough doesn't stick and you can leave it up easily without stretching and ruin the gluten. But you can also use any cooking oil without using the spray, just rub with our hand, that would be fine. Okay. That's good. So you will gently, uh, lightly grease some oil on the dish before you transfer the dough into the dish. Yes, you know? yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. That's a good point. Have you all taken, taken down your notes? So up to this stage, and you look at the differences of the dough. One has, uh, we haven't done the cauliflower for this one, isn't it? It's because it's too yeah. strong, the dough. And this one has already done the cauliflower. Yep. for first round yeah the dough looks a bit shaggy but it will develop over the time resting it should be fine over another one hour you can do another coin okay i i saw some questions people are asking is it necessarily that we transfer to a square dish or can we transfer it to a bowl yes you can use any shape of the bowl or the container but my preference goes to a square because when I do the koi fold, I can judge the dough equally from four sides. I can make my dough sit in the nice shape where it is my shaping later on. Because when I shape, I prefer a square or a rectangle dough instead of a round shape. So it, it, it actually depends. You can use round bowl. If you don't have this dish, you can use any shape. So this is just my preference. Okay, look at the dough. All right. Um, all right, so now, how do you judge? If the dough has been proved sufficiently up to this stage. Okay, I'll show you a dough that has proved almost to the max of the bulk proof. Okay. okay, this is how big I will prove my dough to. I'll show you the first one compared to this. This is a, the dough that has just been transferred. And this is the dough that is almost done proofing which I'm going to shape it later on. So this is how big I, I uh, proof my dough. To me, this is about 50% grow in size and it takes about five hours at 25 Celsius, 25 to 26 Celsius, about five hours. And you can see the dough is still strong with the round edges. Okay, read your dough, all right. Look at this, it is rounded edges, the dough holding up the shape. Unlike the dough that just now before I coil this, it was flat, totally flat. This is the dough that is still having some strength, rounded edges and with some growth in size. And this is the stage I'm going to shape it, okay? So read the dough and don't shape with the clock like you have to shape at two hours, three hours, four hours. No, read your dough and shape it at the time you feel the dough is uh, due for shaping, all right? Okay, I think um, there's a question pop out. I think um, I'm interested in, in these questions as well. Somebody is asking, do we do lamination? That's a good question. Do we do lamination? What's the purpose of doing lamination? For those that, uh, who have been following me on the Instagram and Facebook, you've probably seen my answer before. I use lamination to add fillings at any additions, like you need to add sesame, you need to add anything to the dough, nuts, walnuts, I will use the lamination. Otherwise, I do not think it is necessary for this dough to go through lamination. Mm, okay, so, 
So um, you need to look at the reason that you want to do lamination. So don't do it as in you need to do it or you have to do it, but do it as in depends of the reason that you want to do it. Don't do it just because people does it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I forgotten to show you. There's another thing you can watch your dough and read your dough. Look at the dough. It's full with the small bubbles. It's covered with the whole blankets of bubbles, right? This is towards the end of the proofing. The dough is very lively. You don't want to a dough that is so quiet and without any bubbles, without any activities. This is a lively dough, all right? So this is also one of the points. Have you all written down to look at the dough, look at the bubbles, the small little bubbles on top of the dough? So it means that it's proving nicely. So it's proving really nicely. Look at the dough. So I think I have to lift yeah. it up again. So yeah. you, can you see the small little bubbles on top of the dough? Yes, full of the blankets of the bubbles, right? Yeah, I can see it. There are quite a lot of these little bubbles here. So, yeah. yep, so this is how you judge it. So by looking at the dough. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And, um, right. Let's... Okay, um, let's look at this one. So how do you judge how long to bulk proof the dough? Oh, indeed, this is a very good question that more, most of you will ask. Okay, let me show you something. Lovely picture. Is this lovely diagram? It is done by our Zoomy7, Miss Jamie. She's very good in art. So if you are following me, you know the cat Zoomy bread. The recipe art was done by Jamie, all right? She's very talented in designing all this with all the poster. Okay, what is total proofing time? Often people will think I bought proof this much and this much without realizing there are another two stages which is very important. This is stage one, this is stage two, and this is stage three. Total proofing is actually added up from your bulk plus your final resting on the counter after you shape it and the cold retard in the fridge. You may realize many times people were actually looking at only the bulk without having taken into account of these two stages. To me, the most important coming from the tree, number three, okay? Having a fridge that is um, with the temperature of six Celsius or four Celsius, it makes a very big difference, okay? And at many times people will tell me my fridge is 4 Celsius, but do you really check your fridge? It is setting of the fridge and the actual temperature of the fridge will be different. Please put the temp thermometer in the fridge. Look at this. This is my thermometer in my fridge. Put the thermometer into your fridge and check what is the temperature. Even you have set it 4 Celsius, it might shoot up to 8 Celsius. So when you have side the dough growing in this stage 3, you will need to work backwards. My preference is I try to maximize one and two because my fridge can hold up to three or two Celsius, which my dough does not grow. So when my dough does not grow in three, I can maximize my one and two. So always check your number three, then decide what you're going to do with one and two. My bulk proof always goes for maybe four to five or five to six uh, hour at 23 to 26 uh, temperature Celsius. So this is how my, I bulk proof and after I shape, I rest my dough for 10-20 minutes to relax it before I retard it into the fridge. So is this clear for you? Did you take down all this? Take note on this. So okay, so, so does it mean if we have short bulk proof, bulk proof, this one, the first one, so um, the dough usually comes with, uh, usually comes with further proving in the stage two and three. If we have a short proof in stage one, yes, definitely. If you have a very short bulk proof, you have to compensate your further proofing by stage two and three. So it's not just a bulk that stand alone. The bulk proof is not a stand alone event. It is actually an entire process that tells you the total proofing. Don't only look at the bulk. It does not tell you everything. Look at the entire proofing time. Okay, so you have to really 
watch your dough again, watch your dough and not the clock and also watch out the temperature of your, your room temperature and to decide what's the size of the, I mean the, the, the growth of your dough and also yes. the temperature in your fridge if you want to bulk more here, so your fridge has to be... But yes. fridge is always in between 4 to 3 degrees, isn't it? That depends. Uh, some people, they op often op open the fridge too often, they get the very warm fridge. Yeah. And the reason I love to control this at below 4, so that I have certainty about 1 and 2. When you have uncertainty about 3, number 3, which means that your fridge can run 6, 7, 8 Celsius. You have uncertainty about this stage 3. You might end up baking at midnight. You know, your dough grow and you wake up and see, look at your dough, it's over the rim. Oh. Then you have to uh, bake at midnight. That's so, not good. Yes, That's yes. That's not good. And you, you really cannot control if you have this growing in the fridge. Yeah, we don't want to wake up in the middle of the night because I like to sleep through. I want to sleep through the night. So I don't want to wake up in the 2 o'clock in the morning just because I want to bake my sourdough bread. That is not good, isn't it? So we want to enjoy the baking <laughs> journey, the baking yes. process. So, yes. so yeah. always remember when you talk about bulk proof, it comes in an entire process. It's not just bulk timing counts, it's an entire process and your fridge temperature. So, I, I, okay, I see some questions here. Somebody is asking, how do we control the temperature I mean, during the bulk proof, you know, in this, uh, perhaps in stage one, how do you control the temperature in this stage? Well, this dough, the dough that the home baker work with is probably a pump size of dough. Let me show you. Okay. Mm. Look at this. How big is this dough? It's about a pump size, okay? This small size of the dough will equalize to our ambient, the room temperature, very quickly. We are not dealing with the industrial type of dough whereby you have 50 kg of dough, 100 kg of dough that it takes hours to equalize. This dough equalizes to the room temperature very quickly. So look at your room temperature. If your room is at 28, this dough will not run too far out. All right? Okay, so... Uh Okay, um, somebody is asking, is cold retard is important? Is it important to do cold retard in the fridge? Well, I personally prefer cold retard for a few reasons. First is the flavor developing. Second is for the dough to relax and I will have an easier scoring dough the next morning. So I personally prefer a cold retard. You can try and you compare and you share with us how do you feel and how do you like it. Oh, right, okay. Some people will explain that they need some more flavors in the dough when the dough is resting in the fridge, you know. So, but you, you, you try it out, you know, and I, I guess we need to really practice, practice it and, you know, and to get to feel the dough before we can explain much, you know. So, yes, remember longer proofing time does not compromise your flavor, all right. Okay, shorter proofing times compromising your flavor, don't get it wrong. Longer proofing times give you better flavor. Okay, so have you all taken note on this? Yep, I'm going to move to the shaping. Okay, we are going to do the shaping now. Okay. Sh shaping. Right, this is an, a very interesting part. I like, to, I like to watch this part all the time um, from all the bakers, you know, because um, I, 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 I enjoy, I really enjoy seeing how the bakers shape the dough, you know, some of the bakers, the dough looks so differently. So this is an interesting part. So, okay, look at this dough. Look at this one. We're going to show you again the dough. This is the dough that Juicy is going to shape in a moment. Okay, just sprinkle some flour on the dough. Okay, okay. sprinkle some flour and just tip it out okay so you see my dough is aligned to the shape of the dish so when i tip out it is in a square shape and you can see i don't flour my counter because it's sufficient when the dough is developed well it does not need a lot of flour during the shaping okay. the gluten is well developed the dough is easy to shape wow look at the dough it's really nice though mm. Okay, somebody is asking, what flour do you use to, to, to dust the top of the dough? 
Well, I like to keep everything simple because home baker, we don't want to have too many things to juggle with. Yeah, that's yes. right. That's okay, right. Just use the bread flour. Just that bread you flour, would, yes. yes. Okay, just some bread flour. Okay, this is how I usually shape it. Stretch the side of the dough out. You can feel your dough on the first strike. When you pull out, you can feel how extensible is the dough. Right? You don't want a dough that is so solid like a stone that you pull the dough is moving towards together. You want a dough that is slightly extensible and pull and fold in the middle. Okay? The same, I'm doing it on the side. So you can feel your dough when you do the shaping that how strong is the dough that you have actually developed. Pull it out and you feel it is extensible, right? You don't want a dough that you pull the whole dough is moving towards uh, forward. Okay? Just roll it down. Okay. Again, this is a 300 grams of uh, panshukunin flour. Yeah. And I'm trying to seal the side of the dough. Okay. Why, why, why do you want to seal the side of the dough? It's just aesthetic. Okay. okay. I'm, a, I'm just a bit OCD, all right? <laughs> so make it look better. Yes, you, know, yes. I, you okay. know what? You know what? I want to make it look better. Yes. And look at this. Uh, Yes, again, I'm OCD. I need to weigh my dough just to know what is the weight uh, that contribute to the final water loss. After I bake it, I will weigh it again. This is your usual practice, isn't it? So, yes. Yeah. Okay. And again, you look at this basket. I don't flour my basket because if your dough is developed well, it is actually very dry to touch. It is not sticky. It does not stick to my hand. And I use very little of flour. I don't have, I don't have to flour the basket. Just lift it up, put in your palm. You feel like very soft dough. You don't want a dough that is overdeveloped, overworked, and it is so hard. So this is when you feel your dough. Every step, feel your dough. Don't go with the clock. So for this dough, it is 578 because I'm using a lower hydration on 75 instead of 7880. So this is a how, how the dough looks like in the basket. Look wow. at this. It is very jiggly. The dough is very jiggly. If your dough doesn't shake like a rock, then you are overworking your dough, okay? This is very jiggly. This is how my dough looks like in this basket. Mm, okay. So somebody is asking, I see a question here. Do you pre-shape? Yeah, good question. You will notice I don't pre-shape because when my dough is sitting in the glass dish, it is strong enough, so I don't have to pre-shape unless when I tip out the dough, the first motion when I pull the dough, I find it's so extensible like um, probably like chewing gum, not so bad, probably in between of that. <laughs> pull all the way, then I find it's so extensible, okay. then I will do a simple pre-shape and rest the dough before I shape it. As for just now, the slightly extensible is just fine. That is what I want to look for for my dough. You often think that the dough needs to be very stiff, which is... Not my usual practice. <laughs> I love my dough to be this jiggly okay. and this extensible, you know? Yeah, right? so this is the way how Juicy does it, you know? Because uh, every single baker, they have their different way of doing it. So this is uh, Juicy's favorite way of doing it. So this is her usual practice, as in we can see the dough, you know, and it's nice, silky, you know, yes. wow, it's puffy. I, I like it, I like it. And if you are using the same basket, try to judge your dough in the basket for the every big so that you know how big is your dough this is how big my dough in a 25 cm basket remember this is 25 cm and my recipe is 300 gram flour this is how big if you are shipping a dough that is sitting like 30 percent in the basket then you are under bulk your dough you're way under too proof. small isn't it yes way yeah. too small you're getting too short the proofing and you're getting an underproof dough and i will oh. show you tomorrow on how does an underproof dough uh, bakes like you know the bake of the underproof um, okay yeah. how, how, how does it how, how does the dough look like uh, the, the, the bread look like if it, it, it was underproof yes. so Chusi will show it on her page tomorrow on her insta and facebook do go and like and share our life now and go and like her page and follow her ig then you can see what uh, the whole process look like you know so um uh okay any sign of overproof dough? 
All right, overproof dough, you can literally feel it when you shape your dough. It's very sticky, stick to your hand. It can be overproof, it can be underdeveloped, which means the gluten is not well developed, so it is sticky. Like what I said just now, my dough is not sticky to touch. It's very easy to touch because the gluten is developed well from the beginning. I do not tear my dough. I do not ruin my dough. I make it one whole dough that is very easy to work with. So it is not hard at 75 hydration. You don't have to go down to 65. As long as you work at a comfort level, you don't have to go up to 85. It's just at your comfort level with the flour. And for pan shokunin, I highly recommend to work with maybe 73 to 75% hydration. It's very easy to work with. As you can see, I don't have sticky hand at all. And for this, this dough, I don't really need to stitch it. You may ask why I stitch my dough, when I need to stitch my dough. Yeah, that's right. Well, a dough that is quite uh, soft and when you put the dough into the basket, you feel it quite soft and it's lack of strength, you can do a light stitching. For this, I can show you how is my stitching like. Pull, fold over. Do you see my dough tear? It does not tear. If your dough tear during the stitching, your gluten is weak. It can be weak because you underdevelop your dough or it can be weak because you overproof. Ah, mm. right. right. So, so pull, okay. it does not tear. So mm. it is not overproofing even I proof for five hours mm. because I'm controlling my proofing on the stage three. Remember the yeah. fridge stage three. Before you ask how much you bug proof your dough, you ask what is your temperature of the fridge. That is the most important part. See, uh, this is how that. the stitching okay wow. so I get a very smooth dough from beginning to the end so you may want to try this flour it is a flour that is very easy to work with and it can use in many um, places like even soft bread sandwich loaf yeah and this sourdough right? oh, wait wait hang on a minute you see I saw you pop up this little bubbles so what's the reason behind of doing this uh, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no. I, I, I just yeah. I just don't like any big bubbles okay. to create a big tunnels or yep. big big pocket All right. at the okay. end of the bit, right? So, so okay. Use this to judge is your dough sitting this much in the basket. Okay, make sure you use three hundred gram flour. You have this size of dough in a basket. Okay. Okay. So again, this is a three hundred gram of flour with a 75% of hydration. So you need to bring your calculator out and sort it out how much is the 75%. Yes. So this is your homework, okay? So this is your homework. You're not just sitting down there and watching the whole process, but you need to do some homework. And yeah. with 20% 20% of the starter, okay? And yeah, this is how... And 2% of salt, all right? Oh yeah, 2% of salt. And this is how the dough look like. And look at, look at it's, that. It's I'll, quite jiggly. Yeah, I jiggly. will just rest on the counter for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes just to relax the dough. It will not prove much further, okay? It will not prove much further. So you just to relax another 10, 15 minutes and I will put into the fridge for like 10, 12 hours until tomorrow morning, I will bake it. So the dough will not grow further and it will stay at about this size. It just relax out. It will spread out, but that is not the grow. That is just the relax of the dough. Okay, and there is one question popping up. Somebody is asking how many percentage of the protein for pan shikunin flour? Um, I Let think me show you. Let, let's, show you the flour. let's look at the flour and okay, this is yeah. the flour. This flour with 12.2, okay? This is 12.2. It is not as strong as the 13-14% of flour. It's just nice at 12.2. You can use it for sandwich, wow. loaf. Uh, soft bread or even a sourdough like this at this percentage of uh, hydration. So just try it out and wow. tell me how do you like this. Wow, I can't believe 12% can make up such a nice dough. Look at yes. that. So you guys have to really try out this flour, you know, pan shikunin flour. So and um, there is a question here. Okay, somebody is asking about starter. Yep. Let's look at the question for starter. All right, um, when to use the starter? I guess uh, she's asking, um, when are you using your starter? I mean, to mix inside into your dough. Um, yeah, well, 
even though this is something very common practice but I noticed there are some people who use at different stage and it may cause uh, some problem to your dough so try to use your starter at peak at peak meaning the starter rise to a maximum and it does not rise further the dome become flat so that is the point where you, you want to use your starter do not use your starter after it collapses regardless of collapse one inch two inch or on the ground try to catch your pig but of course if you are run out of time and it collapsed a little bit then you want to use it it's all right it's fine okay. you can go ahead all but right. if you can allow to have time to time your starter try to use it at the pig so I, I guess we really need to be friend with our starter so we <laughs> must, must know the behavior uh, so yes. that we can time how much time to wait until the starter go yeah. into pick and we are ready to use the starter isn't it yes. so okay that's a good question um, uh, well somebody is asking can you overshape your dough overshape <laughs> all right what do how you mean by it, overshape how does it affect the final brand i, I cannot understand okay. this question overshape i suppose what you are referring to overshape is you're trying to tighten and tighten and tighten until become a batu all right in malaysia malay language is batu in english it's a stone okay i will show you how <laughs> it's a stone crumb like if you overshape or you underproof your dough it's coming up to be about the same dense crumb you want a light and fluffy dough you want a light crumb and airy crumb don't overshape your dough overshape meaning uh, you are trying to shape very tight am i right to say so if your question i'm addressing it correctly where you can see how i shape my dough i do not over tightening my dough i actually do it very light folding left right and rolling down very lightly don't tightening tightening that is provided you have developed sufficient strength for your dough okay that is how my usual practice you may want to try it out and see what is the outcome do you get a very big bloom, blooming of oven spring just try it out and tell me does that make any difference to your dough outcome Yep, okay, so this is the way how Juicy does it, you know, this is her way of shaping, her way of practice, you know. So uh, you may have a different way. So I, I guess we all have to really practice to know our dough, feel our dough, and uh, to read our dough so that you get to know um, what's the outcome, you know. So um, there, there is no uh, specific rules, but yes. you, you, you got to work with the flour, the hydration, the starter, and the temperature. Yeah. Most okay. importantly, you need to read the dough. La. <laughs> All right. Okay, somebody's asking, will your dough shrink in the fridge? Okay, I won't call it shrink. I will call it relax because you are having a shaped dough now, which is strong, and it is having some rounded edge, right? When you leave in the fridge to relax over the night, it will spread and fill up the gap okay it will just spread i will say it relax it is not shrink okay it relax all right okay that's good that's good so i, I um all right um i think uh one more questions let's let's answer one more question because of time constraint uh okay somebody's asking how do you achieve a, a better oven spring or, or okay. yeah okay all right or, or say open crumb kind of you know? Yeah, I think everybody wants a good oven spring, or maybe you want autumn belly spring. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, I notice a lot of people mistakenly thinking that the dough that is very tight and very strong will bloom, which to me it is not. A dough that has a balance of extensibility and elasticity, which will give you a very good oven spring. You often will notice my dough does not look very stiff, rigid, and hard. It looks very soft, extensible. So that kind of dough will give you a bloom. If you notice the Zumi 7, they start to get the belly spring <laughs> after our autumn, session. Autumn, yeah. autumn belly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, oh, Chusi just uh, mentioned about extensibility and elasticity. So, I think she has just shared, uh, I think she shared before in her page. Uh, well, about, yeah, yeah. About I have a video uh, explaining about extensibility and elasticity. 
Yeah. Uh, you may want to take a look. I will share the link again. Basically, it is talking about the dough strength. A very elastic dough is actually basically very strong. A very extensible dough is weak dough in the other way around. Okay? Yep. So, again, go to her Facebook or her IG. Follow, like, and share. Autumn Kitchen or Autumn Baking Dairy. Yeah. So... Apart from this, let me just share you some devices I'm using, some equipment I'm using. Okay, I'm having this little one. Okay, I'm having this one. This one I always put on my counter. So, my kitchen is 27. Look at this, 27 Celsius. And I'm putting this uh, little small one in the fridge to check my fridge temperature. You may think the fridge is having... 6 Celsius or 4 Celsius or 3 Celsius. You may also want to check your fridge at every shelf. Every shelf has, has different temperature. Sometimes the lower the shelf have lower the temperature. So you, you may just want to try at which shelf giving you the best temperature where you want to control your dough. Those are very details and meticulous that you have to zoom into to get a good dough and good bread. Okay? Exactly. So read the dough. If you ever yeah. times with the clock, you're going to... Uh, a loose touch with your dough feel, alright? Exactly, exactly. Well, before I get into Zumi 7, I, I, I always overproofed my dough just because the, the dough growing too much in the fridge because I didn't yeah. check the temperature in the fridge. Okay. This is just a simple cooler box, you know? Wherever you can get it from Pasa, the market, the local market, wherever you can get it. Okay, just oh, a simple... supermarket, yeah. Yes. yeah. Place a two ice pack or one ice pack and place your dough in. If you think your kitchen is so hot, 33 Celsius, 32 Celsius, place in, put one inside and you can see the temperature. As I said, the dough equalizes pretty quickly to the ambient, all right? Because it's yeah. such a small dough. Yeah, and okay? also, if, if, if you don't know, we're in Malaysia. It's a whole year round tropical, hot, humid country. So my kitchen is 32 degrees. <laughs> Celsius. So I really need that in control my dough temperature so that it will not go overproof. Alright, um, I think um, um, that's... Uh, any more questions coming out? Any more? Uh, let's see if we have any questions from the floor. Alright. Um, yeah. I'm, any more questions? Okay, all right. And if there is no more questions, I think you all. I hope you all um, uh, clear about uh, what Juicy has already explained just now. And wow, right now, exciting moment. Juicy has a special announcement to make. Let's roll. Yes, <laughs> this is the most exciting moment. All right. I guess now is a festive season that everybody will be baking a lot and Marubishi has, has agreed to come up with a promo code for this flour. This flour, Pan Sukunin flour, take note of the name. And you can approach to the, all the participating outlets which I'm going to share the link later on in my page and to get a discount code, show the discount code to the participating store and get a 10% off for the flour. Alright, this promotion will last until 31st of December. So you have about 3 weeks plus to work on this dough to get uh, to come up with a beautiful bakes. For those who is uh, Malaysian bakers, please share your beautiful bakes after this session and hashtag #pansukunin hashtag read the dough not the cloud. Alright, and post it in SSGM. Sourdough Support Group Malaysia. Okay, and show us how does your bread changes after this live session. I hope to see all the beautiful bakes from now on. And after this session, go home, put your clock into the dustbin, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Throw away your clock, okay? Uh, get, get a thermometer <laughs> instead of a clock, you know? Right, this get is more important, okay? <laughs> don't ever don't ever think that your fridge is what you set, you know? All right. And also must get a good flour. <laughs> Okay. Pine sugar name flour. Wow, this is 10%. That's, that's quite a lot though because yep. I used to buy this flour and never get this discount. So, yep. and the, the discount link will be posted in my page. Just click on the link. It will show up with a promo code. Show that promo code to the participating outlet to get the 10% off. Okay? Simple, easy, and do it now. Okay. Again, 
go to um, this um, Autumn Kitchen on Facebook, Autumn Kitchen in, uh, in, on IG, and Autumn Baking on the Facebook. Go and look for the link. The promotional code is in there. Again, like and share our live, like our page, Autumn Baking, Autumn Kitchen on IG, and we hope to see you there. You know, this is a really great and just in time for festive baking. Marubishi has kindly agreed to give us a promotional code for the purchase of pine sugar name flour. All right, what are you waiting for? Hurry up, go quickly download the link from Autumn Kitchen on Facebook or the IG. Go and like and follow, share. And this is only valid until the 31st of December. Hello, let's count. How many days left? Okay, quickly, go and get it now. Get it now. And don't forget to get our book, Autumn Pick Baking Natural Yeast. Where can you get this from? You can get it from Shopee. Uh, if you are in Malaysia, the online website, Shopee, uh, Lazada, or Popular Bookshop. And there are all bookstores in Malaysia. You can find this. If you can't find it, go and PM me. I will get you one. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Okay, I, okay, I'd like to thank my whole group of Zumi7. They have been spending days and nights with me going through this session. Really, we have actually gone through the flow, the contents of the whole event. And I truly appreciate their input. You know? I have Carling, I have Jamie, I have AB, I have Billy, I have Janet, I have Jamie. Uh, sorry, I have Lily. And every one of us work together to get this content and the flow out to help everyone to read the dough and not the club. Okay, I guess this is more or less about that. Okay, remember to use the hashtag Pine sugar name flour and also um, the hashtag for read the doll and not the clock. And today's event is supported by Marubishi and Autumn Kitchen and has no financial interest at all in this product and the promotion. Yep. So um, remember, I don't take a cut of this, and this is what you get from Mar Marubishi. And Autumn has no cut on this, and I hope you enjoy this session and try to bake beautiful bakes. Yeah, Autumn, right. Autumn and Marubishi, they are so kind. They just want to um, show their gratitude to the supporter. All right, okay. Um, that's the end. I think yep. almost the end of the live session. So thank you for all joining us tonight. And Chusi, do you have any final words? from no. you before we wrap up. I think that's all and I hope to see everyone back it. Okay, thank you very much and good night. Good night and once again, hashtag Pan Shukunin. Like and share our page. Bye, good night and stay safe. Yeah, bye.